how how volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous world that we are living in today right our world is volatile okay uncertain complex ambiguous right and one pandemic could teach us that one pandemic could teach us that right and forbes magazine highlighted how the world has transformed the way we did business before pandemic is totally different than the way we are doing business post pandemic the world has become increasingly volatile right one of the <coughs> i'm sorry one of the authors had mentioned volatility means how violent changes are happening now he is not saying slow changes he is not saying fast changes he is he was saying volatile means how violently uncontrollable changes are happening in industries thanks to this pandemic thanks to this pandemic you would have seen these changes right right as some of you were students in some of you would have been students in college pre pandemic some of you would have been students still in school and how you saw that your education system became online within just couple of weeks your education system was supposed to become online maybe 10 to 20 years later but it became within two weeks that's how quickly the technology transformed it had to transform there was no other way because there was a pandemic at head and that's a forbes magazine said look at all the industries whether it is healthcare it has never seen the toll as it is seeing today whether it is education sector whether it is uh, any industry whether it is travel and tourism whether it is manufacturing industry people have seen how volatile and uncertain they can be their industries can be right how complex and ambiguous their world is right the industries that were uh, 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 for example countries like india which are which is kind of almost 100% reliant on other countries for its semiconductor ic imports in covid lockdown we just could not get our semiconductor ic without ics without those semiconductor ics we, we just could not manufacture even our automobiles or anything there were companies there were industries which would just stop their assembly chain just because they could not get a small ic which we didn't make by ourselves our reliance on china and other economies were tested during these times and we could not get an alternative easily that was the saddest part now that is what is volatility uncertainty complex and ambiguity is about and fortunately or unfortunately you are a generation who is going to go through it india is at a transition time the world is going through a transition time right arundhati roy a very popular author we all may have heard about her she wrote a book on pandemic uh, during uh, uh, the pandemic uh, uh, was on its peak and she had mentioned something very uh, uh, very nice in that book and she had said pandemics have always forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew this one is no different it is a portal a gateway between one world and the next i would like you to look at that word it is a portal a gateway between one world and the next she was trying to say in that book that the pandemics have always been a show stopper in the world in 1920 when there was a pandemic the world was never the same in 1600s when there was a larger pandemic like this the world was same. in short before the pandemic the world was will the world will never go back to that time the world has changed forever economies have changed forever industries have changed forever the hiring pattern in industries have changed forever the manufacturing sectors have changed forever your education systems have changed our education systems have changed forever the world will never go back the world is looking at a new world order altogether post pandemic we are still going through the pandemic and this will last for another couple of years but after that the world is never going to be the same and you my students are going to face this world head on right your limits are going to be tested you like it or not right the pandemic is a portal or a gateway between one world and the next the world is going to transform it's it's going to go through a massive transformation over a shorter period of time something it was supposed to transform within a decade it is going to transform within let's say a couple of years and that transformation is not easy not easy on industries not easy on manufacturing sector not easy on education systems not easy on anyone any transition is going to be very painful and you are part of it and that is why 
knowing entrepreneurial thinking having an entrepreneurial mindset and skill set is so very important in today's generation our degrees are just a piece of paper let me tell you without an entrepreneurial mindset without an entrepreneurial mindset and that is why entrepreneurial mindset is so important so important right yeah so we are at the birth of a new era a new world right and this new world or new era requires you to cultivate a new mindset altogether a new mindset right, right. and that mindset i would call as an entrepreneurial mindset and until and unless we cultivate that entrepreneur mindset let me tell you it is going to be extremely difficult for us to navigate into this new world navigate into this new world or new era to say right so we need to navigate into this new era new new world with this new mindset or which we call as an entrepreneurial mindset right so what is a mindset what comes to your mind when you hear this word mindset can anyone think about anything that comes to your mind when you hear this word mindset can you think about it what comes to your mind when you hear this word mindset yeah what comes to your mind right now somebody rightly said in the book of proverbs that for as he or a man thinketh in his heart so is he a very profound word right so as you think in your heart so are you <laughs> okay that is what is mindset now some of you may be thinking this sounds very philosophical but how do we understand what is a mindset right now so if i should ask you a word that what comes to your mind when you hear this word mindset right let me put it in a context or let me put it uh, uh, across to you with an example if i should ask you a question right who is the king of the jungle right most of you will be laughing at me and or smiling back and saying uh, sir that is no brainer right who is the king of the jungle definitely the lion the king right lion is the king of the jungle right so you may say sir this is a simple question well lion is the king of the jungle right yeah, would anyone debate over it no we were taught so in our school we were taught so in our education system we have raised up knowing that lion is the king of and it's true okay lion is the king of the jungle right fine but why do we call lion of all the animals as the king of the jungle why don't we give this title to any other animals in the jungle have you ever asked yourself that question no just because my teacher said so so i believed whatever my teacher said <laughs> is that the case with you or my book said so, so i believed 100% what the book says is right was was that the case with you why do you call lion is the king of the jungle why don't we give that title to let's say um, a hip, uh, a rhinoceros or let's say a hippopotamus right some animals like that you know why don't we give that title to them why can't they be called as a king of the jungle they are very strong animals right in fact one of the strongest animals living in the jungle why don't we give that title there right why don't we give the title to animals such as cheetah which is the fastest animal in the jungle right which the runs way the lion hunts sir yes sir the way the lion hunts okay the way the lion hunts right okay so that may be a reason that lion hunts okay 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 well, why don't we call elephants as the lion of the jungle no. uh, sorry this uh, king of the jungle elephants are big strong 56 or 50 to 100 times bigger than a lion why don't we call elephant as a lion of the jungle have you thought about it? right we call lion as a king of the jungle right or why don't we call a giraffe as the king of the jungle it's a tall animal tallest right so if you look at giraffe the tallest animal in the jungle uh, an elephant as the largest animal in the jungle or we have the cheetah which is the fastest we have the uh, rhinoceros which is one of the strongest right maybe we have some of the most cunning animals like hyena or snake or so on. can you give any one of those titles to lion is lion the fastest is lion the strongest is lion the largest is lion the tallest is lion the wisest animal of the jungle can you give any of those titles to lion can you think about it yeah i don't think lion fits any of those titles right lion is not the fastest lion is not the strongest lion is not the largest 
lion is neither a tallest animal or lion is neither the most wisest or most cunning animal in the jungle no it doesn't fit any of this bill lion is just an ordinary animal an ordinary cat right maybe it is very well known for its hunting skill but there are animals which has more efficiency than lion in a hunting skill leopards have better hunting skill why is lion called as the king of the jungle have you thought this thought about this question right have you thought about this question i firmly believe right lion is called as the king of the jungle for no other reason but because of the attitude it has but because of the attitude it has have you seen a lion facing off an elephant right now elephant may be bigger than lion maybe 100 times bigger than lion but when an elephant looks at lion what comes in his mind when an elephant looks at a lion what comes in its mind it may think that this fellow can eat me right and the elephant is cautious while dealing with a lion when the lion looks at an elephant a small cat staring at a large animal like a lion when he looks at an elephant what comes in his mind well i can eat it it looks like a mcdonald burger right a <laughs> bread on the top and bottom and a meat in the center lion's appetite drives it beyond its capability right and this is why lion can overcome the largest animal in the jungle or the tallest fastest or the strongest animal in the jungle do respect lion it's not because of the strength that the lion has it's because of the attitude lion has it's because of the appetite lion has you know if you want to become an entrepreneur or you want to start thinking as an entrepreneur attitude is the key to your mindset that that you need to develop attitude right attitude is the key aspect right the way you think the way you think will dictate your behavior right the way you think will dictate your behavior now you may think sir what is the great thing about this attitude stuff right you know we thought education is all about uh, or success is all from education you get more educated you become more successful you get more degrees you become more successful or you get educated in united states of america you become what is attitude right look at the leaders in this world right they are not the leaders who are the best in any field look at the ceos in this world they were not the people who were best in their field they were not people who had the highest number of degrees qualification many of those ceos do not even have a formal degree right or degree complete but they are C why is because of the attitude they have attitude is a key aspect to your mindset you know somebody rightly said right you know knowledge is what will take you up there attitude is what will keep you up there right no to i i put this much more in context but let's talk about entrepreneurial mindset what is an entrepreneurial mindset if you should ask yourself a question what is an entrepreneurial mindset like what what is this entrepreneurial mindset well we know about mindset now we know about mindset so what you think so you are right we know about a mindset now what what is this entrepreneurial mindset now there is a very good book on entrepreneurial mindset written by rita gunther magrath and ian macmillan it is known the book is titled as entrepreneurial mindset and you can definitely read it online through mit library now entrepreneurial mindset says a way of thinking about your business that captures the benefit of uncertainty in short they had put in the book what is entrepreneurial mindset a way of, of thinking about your business that captures the benefit of answer in simple words they said entrepreneurship is the best when uncertain times are there when uncertain times are there entrepreneurship kind of thrives and there are no uncertain times better than this now right yeah look at the world today we are living in one of the most uncertain times we are living in one of the most volatile times complex and ambiguous times and if this is so then we need to we need an entrepreneurial mindset so that we'll benefit the captures of uncertainty and without entrepreneurial mindset we will not be able to capture the benefit of uncertainty there is uncertainty around the world today but there is also opportunity in that right yeah in fact do you know one thing that there is no word called crisis which a world was shouting at its peak when the covid pandemic was going on right 
after the word covid and uh, uh, corona the, the next most popular word during the pandemic that was used worldwide was crisis our economy is in crisis our healthcare system is in crisis people's lives are at crisis crisis was a word used and crisis simply means danger or tragedy right but do you know what crisis root word was taken from a chinese language and in chinese language there is no word called crisis basically there is no the, the word called crisis is not defined as tragedy alone or danger alone. it is defined as tragedy with opportunity right so so when a chinese man hears crisis what he hears is opportunity no wonder china was taking all the opportunity that it could during the pandemic times right so there is no word called crisis in chinese language the root word though is taken from there and the root word actually means tragedy with opportunity you know though we are living in uncertain times though we are living at times where economies are going through a tailspin and yes it is true but still these uncertain times can build the future that we are living in provided we have an entrepreneurial mindset now do you understand why our politicians are talking so much about entrepreneurship or do you understand why our industrialists even are talking about entrepreneurial mindset there are certain job description which says that we are looking for candidates with an entrepreneurial thinking i'm talking about job description because they want intrapreneurs right in one of your iic impact lectures anand mahindra came and told that you're looking at a generation where we need intrapreneurs what what are they trying to talk we want people with entrepreneurial thinking because people with entrepreneurial thinking will capture the benefits of uncertainty there are problems in the world there are crises in the world and only people with entrepreneurial minds let me tell you not people with electronics engineering degree not people with mechanical engineering degree people with an entrepreneurial mindset whatever degree or background you may be have you can capture the benefit of uncertainty and for this you need a mind that perceives problem around you and captures opportunity in that right so yes there are problems around you there are problems uh, all around you but how do you benefit, how do you capture this uncertainty and make it into an opportunity not only for your country but then you export that opportunity or export that solution to the world and i want to give an example before that let me ask you a question right and i want take you uh, i want you to take this quiz right uh, i hope all of you have your mobile phones so i want you to go to this website called menti.com www.menti.com and type in this code 4336 okay go to this uh, portal uh, just log in uh, with your phone right i know uh, most of you may be knowing this polling uh, platform go to menti.com and just answer this question when it comes to technology startups entrepreneurship which country comes to your mind right which country comes to your mind so know this uh, the code is 4336 4980 right just take up this quiz okay just take a break and take this quiz uh, quiz right it's just just mention you know a country's name that comes to your mind just one option right when it comes to uh, technology startups entrepreneurship which country comes to your mind emma i love you answer the polls Just take two minutes to answer the poll. Sir, here uh, students are having some network issues. Some are uh, okay. able to answer, some are not able to. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay. Sir, can you show the code once again? Sure, sir. Sure, sure. One minute. Okay. 
Okay, hope it's visible to all of you. Yeah, four three three six four nine eight zero. Okay, four three three six four nine eight zero. Yeah, I can see a lot of uh, uh, responses already come. Okay, so we'll go to the response page. Just let me stop sharing this. The code is four three three six four nine eight zero. You can make a note of it. Four three three six four nine eight zero. So let me share the results with you. Yes. So many of you, I hope you are able to see my screen with your results coming in. Right. Yes. So you are saying India, USA, Japan, China. <laughs> Some of you have gone to Avengers World, <laughs> World of Avengers, Wakanda. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, China, Germany, America, Russia, Italy, UK, France, Canada. Okay, Pakistan. Good. So. Great. So a large majority of you are answering it as India and some of you are answering it as Germany. Uh, some of you are answering it as Dubai. Well, Dubai is not a country. Uh, Dubai is uh, the country that Dubai is in is, is called United Arab Emirates. China, a lot majority of you have said China. Right? Yes, when it comes to uh, manufacturing, you talk about China. Okay. Right? You talk about Germany for quality manufacturing or high quality manufacturing, right? You talk about, let's say, South Korea when it comes to high tech manufacturing, when it comes to a phone or let's say 5G modems in the future. We are talking about South Korea, which is taking the lead in that. One of the fastest grown economy in the world, right? Japan, when it comes to high techs, it is Japan, right? Uh, nobody comes close to it when it comes to the way technology is adopted and used. Right. When it comes to emerging tech uh, sectors where startup is given a lot of preference and support, Canada and United Kingdom, of course. And of course, United States of America is the largest ecosystem for startups. Right. If I should tell you globally at the top, right, there is a country called United States of America and that ranks at the top with the entrepreneurial ecosystem, number of startups, businesses it creates every year. And yes, it is a huge country with a lot of entrepreneurial potential. But when you take the second and third ranking, okay, India is said to be third in the global index. India is called to be a country which is third in the global index. Right? And the country that we are actually competing for this third position, which I don't see anyone has uh, uh, actually mentioned here. right? But let me uh, take you to that uh, country right which is re in reality the the country that that is talked about when it comes to entrepreneurship when it comes to technology when it comes to startup and i'm surprised i felt uh, uh, some of you would have actually answered this right i have seen this name floating in many places uh, but maybe this will come as a surprise for you now if you have heard about israel right yeah I don't think there would be any single person who have not heard about Israel because Israel is there in the news sometimes for right and sometimes for wrong reasons. But let me tell you, if you, if you need to look at technology, what technology can do, if you want to look at what startup can do, if you want to look at what the culture or entrepreneurial can, thinking can do to a country, look at Israel. When it comes to technology, when it comes to startup, when it comes to innovation, World over, people look up to this country called Israel. Let me tell you, the other name for Israel is called as a startup nation. Now, let me tell you, Israel came into existence in the year 1948. Many of you would be knowing this, right? And in 1948, when it came into, out into existence, it was in crisis. The worst crisis humanity can think about, right? Now, you know, they got a small portion of land which they occupied, right? And... Uh, the very first year after they had got independence, that is in 1948, the month of May, 
when they had got independence they were facing crisis at an another level india also got independence almost at the same time 1947 now but in 1948 when israel got independence they did not inherit a very great land to see two third of the country that they inherited was actually desert nothing grew there two third of the country two third of the country can you imagine right two third of the country imagine if india's two third of the country was uncultivatable can you imagine what crisis would have been there two third of the country was uncultivatable israel was facing an agricultural crisis from day one of its independence the next big crisis israel was going to face was a security crisis of course their neighbors were around 360 times bigger than them put together okay if you put together the countries like egypt lebanon syria jordan all these countries that surrounded israel none of them friendly and together they were 360 times bigger than israel 360 times and they were ready to take over this country at any opportune time they were not friendly with this country and israel knew that they were in a security crisis a defense crisis they knew their country is badly in defense guys their country was in a water crisis in israel there is no fresh water source india is blessed with fresh water resources we have rivers we have so many mountains from where we get fresh waters we have dams we have so much of fresh in israel no fresh water resources no rainfall like india has <laughs> people are floating in water everywhere in india during the rainy season this is not the case in israel israel does not have a river to its name at least egypt has nile river israel has no river it has a dead sea of course even that comes in jordan now that is the condition of israel it has no water resources but let me tell you they knew that they were facing a water crisis 1948 itself they did not have an idea how to feed their people drinkable water it was so sparely available in israel they knew that they were in lot of crisis on the day one of their birth they were in political crisis agricultural crisis security crisis but this is a country which had an entrepreneurial thinking this is a country which had a legacy of entrepreneurship and innovation right and this country the way it built up its country today to the extent that it has built up today right in every sector <coughs> i'm sorry in every sector in which it was in crisis is amazing in the world's eyes let's take for example agricultural technology israel is considered as a marvel to the world when it comes to agriculture marvel you look at some of the best agriculture innovation this century has seen starting from drip irrigation was found in israel right yeah now i am talking about a country where two third of the country was uncultivatable before their independence today more than two third of the country is cultivated upon this is one country in the entire world which is bait back deforestation they they literally inherited a desert now they are converting that desert into cultivatable lands can you imagine that in agriculture field israel is called as a miracle today the governments in the world visit israel for help with respect to technology in agriculture when our prime minister prime minister narendra modi had visited israel he said the technological marvel he has seen in the field of agricultural water cyber security defense is unparalleled even with that of the united states of america he would say i am more impressed in israel i am more impressed in tel aviv than i was in silicon valley this is what our prime minister called and told right our prime minister told in israel right when it comes to agriculture technology when the israeli prime minister the then israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu visited india he was first introduced to few few farmers in india who were greatly thankful for the israeli technology which made possible for them to farm profitably in the field of agriculture tech the world looks at israel recently israel signed an accord with countries like united arab emirates bahrain and it is also in close relationship with now in saudi arabia the reason these countries are warming up with israel is because they want israel's agriculture technology 
they have seen Israel succeeding in one of the most challenging cities. They want this technology. And they know only Israel can help them. Right? Agriculture technology has given a standing of footing to Israel that no other country has. India has rains. India has rivers. But still, Israel, uh, India relies on the technology in agriculture from Israel. Can you guess that? And we are talking about, you know, a country that is so small, so tiny, which is smaller than maybe Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. <laughs> right? right? I'm, let me talk, put it in context. The population of Israel is just 92 lakhs. Population of Hyderabad would be more than that. <laughs> population of Delhi is 2.1 crores. There can be two or three Israels that you can put in, put in Delhi. You know, I would say the population of 90 lakhs, India may have more engineers than the population of Israel itself. But still, we go to Israel when it comes to agriculture technology. Right? When it comes to cyber security, Israel has made a great achievement just in the last five to six years itself. The world knows the capability of the cyber security solutions that Israel gives. Our government, our parliaments did not function for a few days. You know about the reason for that? There was a software called Pegasus. Most of you would have heard about it, right? Pegasus was used, they say, by the government of India to spy upon few people, right? Now, if you look at the origin of this software called Pegasus, which can hack any secure system in the world, even an iPhone or the most secure encryption system, it can hack, not with, you know, sending a data, a email or no, but just giving a missed call. Can you think about it? By giving a missed call, all your data is on your phone would be continuously in contact with your hacker. Right? And there are 24 companies like this in Israel. When PayPal was facing security threats, its security problems were solved by a company called FraudSign, which is a student startup in Israel. And this is the company that was bought by Peter Thiel, the co-founder with Elon Musk for PayPal to establish PayPal as one of the most secure payment gateway globally. It was an Israeli startup. When Google Maps was expanding its feature to navigation purpose, which you may be very wisely, very much using today, when you go to a place where you find navigation information and that also live, this was actually introduced first by an app called Waze, which was an Israeli startup. And this was later acquired by Google and then uh, added as a feature in Google Map as a feature. So today, if we are, we are thankful for that navigation, it was an Israeli startup which did that. Right, right. In the field of computer science and cybersecurity, Israel is one of the best. When you come, when you take companies like Cisco, Microsoft, Intel, one of their largest R and D centers is in Tel Aviv, Israel. In fact, Tel Aviv, Israel, is the costliest real estate infrastructure in the entire world today because of its startup ecosystem. After Silicon Valley in California, Silicon Wadi in Israel is called to be the next most happening place in the world in the sphere of startup. Most number of entrepreneurs are from Israel. The highest density of entrepreneurs created by a country is Israel. Right? Let's take defense technology. 30% of defense exports that has happened from Israel is to India. Can you think about it? India is the largest defense importer in the world. India is the largest defense importer in the world. And it's no brainer, right? All of us know that. 30% of the defense export that happened from Israel is to India. I'm talking about a country with 92 lakhs people are able to give us defense solutions, right? When it came to protecting our skies, right? From, uh, you know, uh, when when uh, Ukraine and Russia went to war, right? The Ukrainian president, who happened to be a Jewish person, right? He, he literally, he immediately rang up to the Israeli president to get the help with their Iron Dome system, which is called as one of the best aerial defense system in the world, right? Israel has one of the best aerial defense system in the world called Iron Dome, right? He did not call United States of America. He did not call, you know, any other country. He did not call India for help. First. He called Israel. He said, I want Iron Dome system because I want aerial defense system to defend my country. They went to Israel. Why? A small country of just 92 lakhs, the world looks upon it. 
whether you take mark zuckerberg jewish whether you take larry page and sergey brin of google jewish larry ellison of oracle jewish where do these people come i'm not i'm not boasting about a race or i'm boasting about a mindset that these people have created in the field of defense israel is one of the foremost country in the world we we boast about our air strike we did in balakot few years back right the bomb used in that was simpex an israeli made bomb because the plane that we were using was a legacy plane that was 40 years old it was a russian mig 29 fighter which for which the russia itself had stopped making bombs right but there was an israeli startup called simpex which said we can create bombs for you and simpex was a bomb that was one of the most potent guided missile system in the world right right when we talk about a tejas aircraft which india made you'd say indigenously built fighter aircraft and we boast about it so much but it was made in record time of order let me say 70% of the navigation systems uh, radar systems and 70% of all the systems that are there in that plane is either israeli made or britain made it's not indian made just because you assemble something that does not mean it, be it becomes indian all together no most of our radar and navigation systems are israeli made today whether it's defense whether it is civilian it is israeli made why such a small country just 92 lakh people a tiny country right means such a big when it comes to water technology israel is called as one of the best countries in the world and by far the greatest country in the world when it comes to water recycling <clears throat> israel's technological advancement in water recycling are so great that 89% close to 90% of the water in israel is recycled efficiently for drinking purposes 90% of the water 90% the second country that recycles the most amount of water is actually spain which recycles only 17% 17 of the water can you look at the difference that's israel and they have no other go they have to do it because they don't have any fresh water resource they only have a mediterranean sea looking in front of them and that's why they were the first country to convert sea water into drinking water when it comes to desalination and you know converting saline water and drinking water israel is at the forefront when chennai was facing drought situation 4 years back in the year 2016 right subramaniam swami our cabinet minister then says that we need to import water technology from israel to save the people in chennai right look at the country of 1.3 billion people looking for help in the sector of water from a tiny country like israel whose population is not even more than one of our metropolitan cities how has this country become that big that great you know when it it, it was all in ruins 50 years uh, 70 years back when it got the independence almost same time like india got and today the country has transformed itself into a tech superpower into a you know entrepreneurial superpower in this world a country which is so small so tiny with such threatening neighbors still one of those neighbors cannot dare touch this country because they have grown to that extent why and time and again if you ask the israeli prime minister right in fact benjamin netanyahu he addressed a conference on cyber security when he was prime minister and he said time and again he said why the what israel is today is all because of the innovation and entrepreneurship culture that has been built in this country and that is why israel is what is israel today let me ask you this question if a country of just just 92 lakhs people can achieve this much how much more a country can achieve 1.3 billion people and our country also happens to be a to be one of the youngest country in the world with more than 69% of the people in the working age 69% right the average age of indians is only 29 it's one of the youngest so it has one of the largest working population in the world 
what are we doing with them can the can the government of india give them jobs no way it's not possible we need entrepreneurs we need a mindset shift we need people who will take up innovation as a challenge bring in a culture of innovation and startup in this country build up companies solving problems let's like israel we solve the problems in agriculture cyber security defense technology what tech they solve the problems they were facing and converted that into industries and these industries gave jobs to their people and also gave solutions to the world to improve its economy and india needs that today and india needs that today we need students with entrepreneurial thinking who would not be job seekers but job providers when they graduate from their courses right now i'm not talking about giving jobs to thousands of people can you give job to 10 people let me tell you you are doing the most patriotic act in the world because when you're giving job to 10 people you're supporting 10 families and nothing greater than that i'm not saying go and establish a 5000 crore turnover company on day one can you establish even a 1 crore turnover company that's enough 5000 startups establishing a 1 crore turnover company that will give more jobs that will give more support to our economy our indian economical system than any anything else right so start small right start in a humble way and never despise your humble beginnings let me tell you startups will benefit our country if you start a business and give employment to 10 people let me tell you that's the best thing you can do for this country because there are more people dying of unemployment than are dying due to any other reason during the pandemic time there was a survey done in the city of noida to find out the highest cause of death now they they were assuming it would turn out to be covid because there are so many people dying out of covid to their utter amazement the survey said most number of people in noida died not because of covid but due to suicide during the second peak of covid second wave of covid and when they heard they died because of you know so said they could not understand why did they die because so said because they had lost their job most of them because their job they, because they lost their job they lost their livelihood to 70% increase in suicide because of that so there are more people dying in our country because of joblessness than because then the people were dying in our border sir we cannot then, see any change in slide sir no no i have not changed sir okay okay sir okay. yeah yeah because uh, we just got it out <laughs> yeah 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 sure so so look at a country like israel right which has turned around its fortune now if we need to make this impact in the world by giving jobs then we also need to focus upon these core industries whether it is agriculture whether it is defense security whether it is water technology whether it is food technology we need to focus on them right yeah i know there's a great vibe about artificial intelligence there's a great vibe about you know data science and it all sounds good but development of a country is in this root technologies until we build them we are going nowhere right so so i want to challenge you uh, students to think entrepreneurially today because it benefits a nation and i would show you one example right an example of how one person did that in our country right in our country how did he have an entrepreneurial thinking and how selflessly he worked to bring that change in our country right now we all know there was a milk farmer crisis when india got its independence of course india was also going through a lot of uh, crisis when it got independence and when it had got independence one of the major crisis india was facing was milk farmer crisis right and this crisis was not only bef- uh, after independence even before independence this crisis was going on uh, the crisis was basically the poor quality of milk that was collected in india and british government was not happy about it so to regulate the quality of milk the british government before independence itself had put a law this law was that nobody can sell milk directly to customers consumers you have to send the milk to a milk processing plant or milk quality checking plant which was handled by a multinational company called polson <coughs> mnc company called polson polson industry now polson industry could not you know gather all this milk at one stretch uh, through their uh, workforce <coughs> so polson industry is actually employed this middleman okay they they employed this uh, middleman or agents would go to farmers collect the milk and come and dump at 
the uh, Polson uh, milk uh, quality checking plant or you know distribution plants. These middlemen, because there are a lot of milk farmers coming to them, now they said we would set our office in one place and they asked all the milk farmers to come to them. Right? So all this milk delivery people, what they do? Uh, the milk farmers, what they, 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 whatever milk they had, they went to this milk uh, middlemen, mostly zamindars and takurs and all, <coughs> and they requested them to take their milk and pay them. Right? But the zamindars knew these milk farmers are poor, most of them uneducated. They started exploiting them. They did not pay them the right amount of money that they deserve. And even sometimes, because these milk farmers walk long distance, sometimes even up to eight to ten kilometers daily to distribute their milk. Some milk would get spoiled because of the heat, heat, or some milk would get spilled. Now, this was <coughs> the reasons for crisis, right? And apart from that, there are MNCs in European countries which has excess milk. They were dumping excess milk in India at very cheap rate, at very cheap rate. So people were uh, kind of going to get those milk rather than getting Indian milk at all. And it lacked technology. Of course, India lacked technology a lot, right? And this is where. In this crisis, there was a person called Mr. Tribhuvan Das Patel in Gujarat. <coughs> he happened to meet. He he was a panchayat leader. He was a politician, and he was seeing this problem of milk farmers, and he was very touched. He was very touched, saying, "I need to solve this problem of milk farmers somehow. I need to give them a solution because how long will these milk farmers, you know, uh, suffer, right?" And to solve their problems. So he was, he was having a heart of passion, but he had no technological know-how. Neither he had any managerial skill to do that. That is where he happened to meet Dr. Vargis Kuren, who had just taken up a government position, a uh, government job position in, uh, in, in Khera district in Gujarat. In Khera district in Gujarat. So he, he saw Dr. Vargis Kuren and he, he asked his help. He said, see, you are an educated person. You, uh, you are having a educational qualification from India and abroad. So you seem to be a person with who knows about technology and all those things. Here we have a problem in our village with milk farmers. Can you solve our problem? And these are the reasons. Reason number one, two, three, he said to Vargis Kurin. Or Dr. Vargis Kurin to say he hated milk. <laughs> okay, He did not like milk or he had nothing to do with milk. But when he heard this problem, he took interest in that. And he said, yes, let me just study the problem and then come back to me, come back, you know, then let's see if I can solve the problem. I don't know how much I can solve, but let, let me see. Now, Dr. Vargis Kurian started deeply empathizing with milk farmers, empathizing with milk farmers, milk farmers in uh, Kerala district. He went, he lived with them, he talked to them, he asked them their problems, he started uh, talking to them about their uh, uh, issues and he understood the problem was because of this delivery system because of this middleman exploitation he understood they were the major two reasons and that's where, that is where he came up with an amazing solution a simple solution right he kind of organized a milk procurement system a simple milk procurement system he said one one reason is one problem is that milk uh, farmers have to carry this heavy load of milk on their head or on their back and travel this long distance uh, uh, every day to the middle mat. And this is a very tiring exercise. And this also uh, spoils a lot of their milk on the way or spills it. And the, uh, they don't get the apt value. So why don't we have the procurement system within the village itself? So the village people will have to just walk small distance, okay, less than a kilometer. So he organized a milk procurement system within the village itself, right? And he also created a technological intervention where if people would come and, you know, uh, give the milk in the milk procurement uh, place in the village itself, their milk quality could be tested because if the farmers add water and give the milk, definitely the purpose would be lost. So. Uh, he had to find a technology. He, fought, he he actually got the technology in use where by which he checked the fat content in milk. And by checking the fat content in milk, he paid the value based upon the fat content and the quantity of milk, the value, uh, uh, correct amount was paid to the farmers. Right? And he also ensured through this system that farmers are paid on daily basis, not on weekly, monthly basis, which these middlemen were doing before that. 
and ultimately this led to the formation of a cooperative society okay so basically dr vargis kurian changed the business model totally where you have to go to a middleman and the middleman will go to the mnc uh, they will take the milk and package it and then distribute it he said no, nothing doing farmers are going to go directly to the market farmers are going to collect the milk farmers are going to test the milk and farmers are also going to go and distribute the milk he bought in a total democratic cooperative system with the far milk farmer sector <coughs> within a year uh, after 1914 when he started it the neighboring district called anand which was a larger district with many hundreds of farmers kerala district had very few farmers anand district in 1950 actually asked uh, dr vargis kurian help because they found in kerala district there was a milk cooperative society people are coming and dumping their milk at milk cooperative society farmers are getting paid on daily basis and because they were getting paid on daily basis their lives were improving their problem was solved right and uh, district uh, uh, milk farmers also came to uh, vargis kurian asked them uh, can you help us also with this problem can you give us also uh, this can you make this cooperative system work in our district also we have hundreds of farmers and that's where uh, dr vargis kurian said why not i'll i'll definitely do that and this doctor that's where dr vargis kurian stepped in and he started this milk cooperative society called amul amul we all may identify the name here it's called anand milk union limited right he found but he he, he was not the founder of amul <laughs> right he was not somebody like dhirubhai ambani uh, he was not like ambani's or uh, adani's where he accumulated a lot of wealth for himself he was just a manager there he just draw a sal salary from he, he he never took over he never had a share farmers were the owners farmers were the collectors of milk farmers were even the distributors of milk the entire system was run by the farmers it was for the farmers by the farmers and run by the farmers it was a total democratic system that he had built up around it now after doing that <clears throat> if i should show you the impact i have data till 2018 only i'm sorry the latest data i have not i could not get so in 1950 around there were two village cooperatives kera and anand today there are more than 144500 i believe today more 1 lakh more than 1 lakh 50000 cooperative societies are there only few hundred uh, milk farmers participated in this exercise today more than 15 million milk farmers participate only 247 liters of milk was collected that time but a 122 million metric ton in 1950 india was called as a milk deficient nation where european countries dumped their excess milk today india is the largest producer of milk by far india produces around 143 million metric ton as of today 143 150 million metric ton second highest is united states of america around 106 million metric ton right <laughs> So you can see the difference. India is by far the largest milk producing country in the world, milk and milk based product. And this is all possible because of this one individual called Dr. Varghese Kurian. Now, if you look, if if you decipher his entrepreneurial thinking, we can say this was more of a social entrepreneurial mindset that he had, right? But if you look at this uh, entrepreneur's thinking, right? if you decipher his entrepreneurial thinking you see that first step that he took was to empathize empathize right he did not jump into conclusion about how to solve the problem he empathized with whom did he empathize farmers he went and stayed with them he understood their problem he studied their problem let me tell you one of the greatest uh, effort that you can take as a student to cultivate an entrepreneurial thinking is to develop this quality of empathize because without this there is no entrepreneur right satya nadella the chief executive officer of uh, microsoft uh, in one of his uh, interview with uh, uh, reporters when the reporters had met him in 20 21 recently right and asked him that see when you became the uh, ceo of uh, uh, microsoft microsoft was going through its worst crisis microsoft share prices had dipped so low and that was one of the reason bill gates kind of fired as ceo and he said you know uh, the board actually rejected the present ceo and then they instituted you and now microsoft shares are up by 600% after satya nadella took over how did you achieve this great feat can you tell us a secret he said the secret is simple he said it's only because 
we empathize with our customers spoken and unspoken needs can you understand that and we went on to create our solutions around it that's called as entrepreneurial thinking empathize dr vargis kurian had this quality to him if you cannot see others pain from their perspective you can never be an entrepreneur who can impact this country of course empathy is all about walking in someone else's shoes and it's one of the most important quality an entrepreneur develops or develops in his thinking to understand others problem because problems are opportunities in disguise and if you need to understand problems and the pain points the people are having around you you need to empathize with them like vargis kurian did if you want to solve the problem of farmers don't look at a news channel <laughs> they are half or they are wrong informations right most of the news channels don't look at our newspapers don't hear to our politicians in parliament no they are all half big do you want to solve the problem of farm go to the farmers stay with the farmers see how they sow to harvest and then you would know what is the real problem of the farmers and then you will be in a better position to solve this problem that is what is called empathize right building relationship understanding problems from others point of view right the second entrepreneur thinking quality that we can th- see from uh, where dr vargis he made sure that is effective resource management milk was a commodity that time and they 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 wanted to india did not lack milk but india lacked management of milk and this is where dr vargis kurian said we need to find a way to manage milk and that's where he made a cooperative society he brought in farmers together he made them form a union he he made sure that how they dumped milk in a central location he made sure that four or five representatives were chosen by farmers who take the milk to the mncs and then you know he created this effective resource management principle right india is blessed with a lot of resources natural resources human resources we need people who can actually effectively manage them there are great companies like ola or oyo rooms or uber or even flipkart who have actually identified this principle they are just managing this they are not creating anything new right they are just managing there are so many economic class hotels lying around in this country without being so oyo gave them a platform there are so many taxi drivers not able to find the right ride and there are so many people who wanted a taxi ride with transparency with security ola found that gap and filled that effective resource man- management is also an entrepreneurial thing technology intervention in today's world without technology we may never be able to fulfill a long entrepreneurial dream technology intervention is not now technology intervention does not mean the buzzword technology <laughs> it does not mean that you need to use every time biotechnology or artificial intelligence or robotics no you need to think about technology that solves a problem not the fancy technology you don't need to think about those fancy what technology can solve my country's problem my people's problem may not be a technology that would solve the people's problem in united states of america we need solution for air condition may be a solution for america but for india it comes at a price we need our own solution electric car may be a very fancy solution very good solution for countries like united states of america or united kingdom where 98% of their energy is not is based upon non uh, renewable energy right whereas india which is still reliant so highly on coal even electric car is not a great technology to shift to that's where our transport minister nitin gadkari was saying india may have to do a giant leap to you know hydrogen fuel cell based cars we may have to bypass altogether this electric vehicle vehicle because india it's not sustainable for it we need to develop for our we cannot import technologies and thrive in india we need to develop technologies for our need our resources <clears throat> work experience did not stop with that he ensured that there was mobilization of his business or of his corporate system he ensured that it did not wait only with kerala district he took it to anand district he took it to all the other neighboring districts in gujarat and then it caught the attention of the very prime minister of our country who later on visited dr vargis kurian and asked him to start 
establishing this cooperative system based system in the entire country and that was called as white revolution right M many of us know that dr vargis kurin is the father of the white revolution right and this all happened because he believed in mobilizing it and he evolved with time dr vargis kurin of course started with uh, helping farmers selling their milk but he understood with time that milk alone selling milk alone will not help we need to sell milk based products also that's where amul came in the sector of making cheese paneer milk powder now they now they sell their milk milk based product not only in india but also in united states of america in european countries in african countries so many other countries in the world we need to evolve with time right so these are some qualities we can actually pick from a person with an entrepreneurial thinking empathize effective resource let me tell you just these two qualities itself right effective resource management and technology intervention that is process innovation where you need not do anything you did not find anything new there are so many solutions lying around there are so many entrepreneurial uh, <clears throat> ventures lying around that when it comes to you know product innovation you need to empathize you need to empathize when it comes to process innovation you need to uh you know use effective resource management technology when it comes to business model and machine you need to mobilize and evolve right but just these two steps itself I mean some of you may be saying i cannot manufacture anything it's so costly i cannot set up a plant just think about process innovation right <clears throat> with this we see this quite often in our country right in the in the left you see 2015 when there was a great flood in chennai <laughs> right now chennai happens to be one of the wettest city in the world right but in the very next year in the year 2016 right and it was called that chennai has the worst drought in the country in 2015 chennai was said to be having the worst rainfall amount there was you know the kind of human cry that was uh, there in chennai so many people went and helped uh, people in chennai uh, because there was water everywhere but in 2016 there was a drought in chennai and this drought was said to be the worst in 145 years let me tell you does india does is india a country that does not have water is it india a country which lacks water as a resource no india has a lot of water resources but india lacks people who can effectively manage this resource what happened to that excess rainfall in 2015 if only we had some engineers who had thought about effective resource management principles in place with some technological intervention those water would have fed chennai even through worse drought situation we need to pick up some lessons from countries like israel which recycles water reuses or stores its excess water right and even exports its water to its neighbors right when it comes to the crisis of farmers we don't have lack of grain in our country right we don't have lack of food in our country or no we cultivation of vegetable what we lack is effective resource management we can feed our country and countries all around the world only if we effectively manage the resources our farmers are creating and only if we do it we can actually transform their lives and lives of many others who are in this ecosystem it it will not happen if we wave off their loans it will not happen if we change policies in the parliament no it will only happen when we effectively help these farmers manage their resources for that we need people with entrepreneurial thinking there was a dr vargis kiran who did that we need more people like him right there are few examples great examples there is example with uh, mr james uh, he was the previous microsoft uh, managing uh, marketing director of entire india right uh, he was uh, uh, he was at a very good position in the corporate world very highly recognized in the corporate world every single ceo in our country knew him because he was a microsoft head in the entire country for marketing and he was actually looking for something better in his life like he he had the entrepreneurial bent of mind and he actually stumbled upon this idea altogether which is called as you know he he found great value in this fruit called jackfruit now jackfruit may be a fruit that may be pretty popular in andhra pradesh also or telangana also or but it's it's quite you know uh, quite common sight in a state like kerala right every street there will be a jackfruit tree and there will be hundreds of jackfruit standing on the jackfruit tree including my house there will be jackfruit but we don't pluck every jackfruit more than 75% of the jackfruit still 
is sadly wasted on the tree because we we can't eat so many jackfruits we can't pluck and nobody comes to buy it all mr james found this he found that 80 80% of the jackfruits in kerala are being wasted but when he found the nutritional benefits of it it is one of the best fruits in the world because of the nutritional benefits of it right it is a fruit uh, that has great fiber content it is a fruit that is called to be great fruit for diabetics especially the raw jackfruit powder it is scientifically proven that it can work like a natural insulin right without any side effects right he found such a great fruit being wasted more than 80% of the time right he found a startup called jackfruit 365 which converts these jackfruits into jackfruit powder and now it's selling it in more than 30000 outlets through a tie up with eastern masala right and how we stumble upon this idea is great right it was just a chance uh, uh, a phone call that helped him to come out with this idea right he, he made a phone call to one of his priest and uh, he was just having a normal call and uh, in one of these calls he happened to you know talk about uh, how about the health of the priest and he asked him how was your health and he said i am fine only for a head you know i just fainted and fell yesterday so he asked him with concern that why why did you faint and fall yesterday he said uh, because i had low sugar levels so he said uh, mr james who knew this priest very well he said but you have very high sugar levels how did your sugar levels come down so drastically i don't know it just happened couple of times so he said when when did it happen before this he said two weeks before now he said two weeks before he said he got intrigued and he asked them did you take insulin that day he said yes i took insulin did you take the right insulin he said yes i took the right insulin okay after the insulin did you have the dinner he said yes i had the dinner what did you have for dinner he said i had a whole jackfruit meal yesterday then he just asked with some uh, curious curiosity what did you have two weeks back when you fainted and fell and now the priest kind of recalled and said i think i had jackfruit that day also because in kerala you know during the jackfruit season you know we have jackfruit as a uh side dish we have jackfruit meal sometimes the whole meal is made up of jackfruit everything right so uh he he kind of felt is jackfruit responsible for pulling down his sugar level that is where he sent a research requisite to sydney university and many universities in india also city university kind of replied saying though jackfruit is a whole green fruit uh it has very low glycemic index uh, it has very low acidity levels also it is a great natural insulin especially for people with diabetes and when this research was found he said well it is said that kerala is a diabetic capital of india how tragic when there is a fruit that can kill diabetes <laughs> naturally right and that's where he started promoting jackfruit 365 powder which is available all throughout the year now which is which acts like a natural insulin which is very beneficial for diabetics right today there are more than 250 small scale industries in the field of jackfruit in the in kerala and more than and uh, even the government has recognized the importance of it encouraging people to use jackfruit in every possible way declaring jackfruit as a state fruit right and giving the importance due importance it deserves this is entrepreneurship this is an entrepreneurial way of thinking identifying opportunity through what a problem that has existed identifying opportunity seeing others problem you know that is what is called as entrepreneurial thinking right now <clears throat> i hope i have two more minutes yeah saloni malhotra is a great example of a woman entrepreneur right now she came up with a startup called desi crew right and desi crew is basically uh, call centers or bp bpos in rural area and they have bpos in both tamil nadu as well as andhra pradesh and telangana now their concept is simple now as the economies were growing as the industries were growing there was a requirement for both english bpo uh, telecallers uh, uh, sorry call uh, call center employees as well as people with native language because indian industries were also growing now she knew she saw one thing that all the call centers or these bpos are only there in cities none of them operated from villages though there were a lot of good talent over there so she brought this thought about this concept of establishing call centers in villages why did she think about it first reason is because when people work from village they can save 90% of their income against if they work in a city they would they will definitely spend more than 70% of their income because they have to pay the rent pay for the daily expenses but if they are in the village and apart from that if she starts this 
industry in the villages in uh, india she would create a non agricultural income possible in villages that is how desi crew was started today desi crew is in many number of villages in uh, in southern part of india and lot of young educated girls especially preferred preferably girls are finding employment in these call centers right yeah so this is how you solve a problem find an opportunity right through an entrepreneur there are a lot of examples like this but i like to stop with this due to uh, lack of time uh, in in short i would like to say is yeah if you are looking for uh, an entrepreneur way of thinking i would say start by looking at a problem looking for a problem right start by looking for a problem and when you see a problem let me tell you every problem has an opportunity right and if problems are opportunity then you are living in the best country right and for finding an opportunity you need a mind which can empathize right and when you find a problem don't be don't be overwhelmed with problem you need not solve that 10 20 problems that you find solve one problem solve two problems solve the top priority problems start with them and as you solve them slowly you'll be able to get across all the other requirements all the other uh, solution so you are not got to solve all the problems but solve one or two problems start with that start small right and that is where your success lies right so entrepreneur way of thinking has to be cultivated it does not come naturally to us thanks to our uh thanks to our culture education system in the past but now we need to recognize that and entrepreneur thinking is the only way ahead because india requires entrepreneurs because india need to create jobs right and unless we create jobs uh, we are looking at a social unrest we are looking at a social bomb that is ready to explode at any time and recent past incidents are very evident of that what happens to youth of a country when they do not have jobs when they do not have a livelihood how distraught they become right and government is doing its part but a great number of or most amount of that part should come from you right you students who are bestowed with understanding of technology a little bit of entrepreneurship can definitely go out and bring up startups businesses that can employ at least 10 people that's the greatest thing you can do <coughs> so all the best i believe all of you will walk in the footsteps of people like james saloni malhotra or varghis kurian to bring a social revolution out of entrepreneurial thinking right not only uh, to gain value for yourself but create value in the society at large right we need that kind of entrepreneurs right thank you thank you so much any questions i am willing to address <coughs> questions students any questions sir i really thank you for the excellent lecture and enlightening the need of uh, entrepreneurial thinking in the current scenario sir current market scenario thank you, you have uh, with a good number of examples uh, really emphasized very beautifully the need of uh, empathizing the problems to yes. convert them into opportunities yes uh, we we hope that our students will make uh, will take a good notes of, of this and uh, use this particular one uh, lecture uh, information in future sir sure sure thank you we look forward for more lectures from you sure sure sir <laughs> sure okay thank you sir thank you thank you